Hi everybody, here's a little project I've been working on. Um, these are going to be like little elves in bathtubs. So yeah, that's these are quite baked already. So what I do is I do the body and the head and then I bake that. Then I attach the legs and then I bake again. Then I attach the arms and bake again. And then I attach the ears and the hair and then bake again. And that way, if you, if, that way, if you do it in stages, you're not going to be squishing anything. Otherwise, you stick your head on and your body on. And then while you're busy working on your ears, you're squashing your head and squashing your nose and that sort of stuff. So if you do it in layers, and I put mine, obviously, depending on what size, but this is only a small thing. So I put it in a little lid and I put corn flour in it so that when you put your piece in, it keeps it perfectly balanced. It's not going to roll over and squish bits of hair and and whatnot and stuff like that. So I bake it in the corn flour and just reuse it over and over again. Um, and yeah, so that's the little elf, the cute little pointy ears, like, and they're going to sit in these little bathtubs and be splashing around in water, basically. So yeah, all I did was made a little ball and then after I've made the little ball, you can use, you can actually use a toothpick to do it or anything, pin, needle. I use this tool here, which is meant to be for making beads. And I just poke a couple of little holes in, make a little ball for the nose. And the body is just basically a little squidgy shape. Because as you can see, once they're in the bathtub, you don't really see the body. You're just going to see that chest piece. So then I do the little body and stick that on. And then I'd put that, go ahead and put that into my corn flour and bake it. And when it's baked, I'll bring it out of the oven and then go to work on the arms and legs. And they're basically just, you know, a little, a little sausage shape. And, you know, you can just fiddle it around until you get the shape you want. I get that little bit on the end and then try and fold it to a little hand and then roll these pieces out. It takes a while. I mean, you have to fiddle around until you're happy with the shape and, you know, but basically you get the shape you want. And for the arms, I give them a bend and then I take a little tool and give them a crease just to, you know, and then give it another roll just to make it look a bit more natural and voila, an arm. And then, you know, position the hands however you want them, if you want them folding that way over or pointing up or and then you just simply attach them. And if you're um, having trouble attaching, because sometimes when it's dry, I use the I use the liquid fino. I haven't got the actual bottle. It's I've got a label like this on, because I gave it to my grandson, and I just poured a bit in here to keep for myself. So you can just take a tiny dab of the liquid fino, dab it on here, and then attach your limbs, like so, um, and then put it in the oven. Obviously, then the same with the ears and the hair. I just roll out super, 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 super skinny bits like that, as skinny as you can. And then I just literally layer them one by one on top of the head like that and start shaping them around until you've got as much hair as you're happy with. Um, and here's a tip I'll give you is, you look at the color of that here and the color of that. This is exactly the same clay um, this is a practice piece that I fiddled around with and this one obviously when I went to make it I scrubbed my hands with a scrubbing brush I washed them over and over and over and over again so they're absolutely spotless and yeah that's the only way to keep your pop vino perfect because look at the difference that is just from the oils and the all the dirt that gets in the cracks of your skin pores which you wouldn't even know was there so don't just give them a little wash or literally scrub them with a nail brush or something or you can wear really tight gloves but obviously if they're baggy gloves it's going to make wrinkles in your fino but if you've got a really tight pair of these latex gloves that can be really good as well but if you're working with light colors yeah check out the difference so really cleaning your hands makes a massive massive difference to your work so i'm just going to color them a little bit now um with some Pastels, let me just get them out. Oh, so yeah, I've got pastels. So yeah, to um, 
give them a little bit more body to them. I use these pastels. They're um, Rembrandt. I got them from the local art shop. Um, yeah, that's what I use to put a bit of colour to things. Um, just give myself a little tool to put that on with. So yeah, what we do is um, take some of those pastels, oh, that's hard to do, an earbud will do, a Q-tip as you call it in the States, and yeah, if you want to uh, make them look a bit more colourful, so I'm going to take some of my colour and just rub it on here, and then on here. So it's not too intense and I want to give them little rosy cheeks a tiny bit so I'm just going to take one of my little elves no I don't think I'm going to be able to get them with ever actually I'm going to have to use a fine brush um let's find a fine one this one will do all right hang on sorry let's take a really fine brush it's so small I can't get in there otherwise A little bit of a rosy cheek in there. <sighs> if it's too much, you can just rub it off. Let's just give it a little rub that in a bit. Give her a little bit of colour on her face there. I don't know if you can see that. We're going a bit closer in a minute. Um, we do this one as well. Stick to the same colour while I'm using it. Let's see. Oops. Yeah, so I use the pastels. You can use mica powders to do this as well, but obviously they're quite sparkly. And uh, I don't really want the cheeks to be too sparkly. I might use it on some other pieces. Might put some mica powders in the hair to make the hair a bit sparkly, especially seeing as they're meant to be elves and not human beings. So, the elves can have sparkly hair. There, yeah, some rosy cheeks. Too much, just a little bit. Well, I don't know if you can see her rosy cheeks. And then we're gonna give her a bit more, give them both a bit more color and texture actually. So let's move these bath tubs aside a second. Um, I want to do a little bit of colour on the ears, so give them a little bit of just their little pointy ears, so to make them a little bit darker in there, like a bit of shading, so you can see the hole in the ear. Going ahead and rubbing on a different colour pastel there, just to make some shading. And obviously it depends on what colour pastels you've got. So... A little bit of pink there, pink them up a bit. Don't want too much there. And put a little bit too much and if you get too much on don't worry you can just wipe it back off so now i'm just going to get a darker color and do a tiny bit inside the hole in the air i'll try to bit of tiniest bit not too dark just so it looks more like a shadow than anything just a little bit of shading on those ears because they're not going to be under the water 
And the bodies, obviously these bodies are going to be underwater, so I'm not too worried about that. Right, so that's one little pixie in the bathtub. Uh oh, now there's a something that can happen, which that's fine. Because we can just rebake and stick that back on. If that does happen. Yeah, like I say, the hand washing thing is imperative, otherwise, yeah, you can really discolour your item. And then when you get finished, it's quite a disappointment when all your white or all your pale colours are completely ruined. So, I don't want to look like it's got dirt in there. just want to uh, have a little bit of shading in there. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, I didn't actually just break it up, I snapped it, look. How oh, ridiculous am I? Oh wow, I squeezed her too hard. Right, well, never mind. What we'll do is get some of this. There you go. Good chance to show you how it works. Get some of this. It's either that or I could make her another hand. I'm going to use some of the liquid fimo. I don't use a brush, I just use the end of the brush. And we'll see if we can stick that back on. I actually broke it. I didn't realise I'd done that, I thought it just had slid, had come off. No, it's been a long way round. So I'm going to use that um, liquid FIMO to try and stick it back on. If not, I'll have to make her a new arm. Right. Voila. I'm just gonna use where's that tool I had? This will do. Use my scalpel, pick a little bit more of the liquid FIMO, and I'm going to just carefully drop it in our oh, arms turning around as I'm doing it. Right, it will work. I've done it before. And it's worked. So, right, let's get that arm in place. Not a shame I broke her arm. Right, there we go. Get the arm in place. So yeah, when you're working, be careful not to squeeze your piece too hard and break it. Just like I did there. Otherwise, you can have a bunch of trouble on your hands. Right, so I'm going to go and stick this in the oven and uh, see if I can repair the arm. If not, I'll have to make her a new arm. But there you go, part of the hazards of playing with the FIMO. And this, you know, this one is FIMO brand. And these ones are just a generic brand. They don't have a name. I just bought them cheap online, but, you know, they work perfectly fine. They're just a lot softer. FIMO is quite hard. And then I've got some that are Sculpey. But um, it is all the same thing. I'll show you some more in a minute. Um... I just want to go and repair this arm and then I'll get back to you. Okay, whilst my little repair job is um, off in the oven baking, I thought I'd show you a few bits. Um, these, some of these tools, these are great. There's a whole set I've got of these with the little balls on the end, all in different sizes. So they come in handy. I don't know if you want to make you know shapes i did it for the ears for the elves you can just make shapes in them with the elves i use these the tiny 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 ball and just went round like that but yeah these tools i find great to work in with fine with the little balls on the end and the other ones i found invaluable are these which are they look like paintbrushes but they're actually rubber 
rubber tips so when you want to get into a tiny tiny little spot and you can't get your fingers in there these are really cool so they've, they've come in really really handy um and yeah you don't have to use pastels or mica powders you can um you can paint the uh, pieces with acrylic paint another thing i've found invaluable is a it's supposed to be a cake umbrella but if you're in the middle of working and you want to walk away put the umbrella up stick it over your work and no dust gets on it because trust me if you're doing light colors you'll come back and it'll be covered in hairs and dust and all that sort of thing so another great tool i found was this one um it has a selection of little pieces that you put in all different shapes um i'll show you this one because i think it's more fun it's like spaghetti so you take a piece of fino and twist your end so it's soft this is nice and soft just take a piece of this hopefully it's soft enough to uh, make it work it should do and then stick a bit in there and let's untwist it a bit more yeah stick a piece in there this is how I made um, the hair for my Halloween doll. This one for her hair. But um, yeah, you don't have to give them hair like this. Like you can give them hair like this. Mine's snapped though. It's, yeah, they're delicate. Right. Anyway, you do that, and then twist the other way. And as you twist, voila. Out comes your spaghetti, perfect for hair or, you know, making little coral reefs or, yeah, and then just separate them. You can use them one by one. So that is a really good tool, especially for Fino. And then these are all cake making cutters. That's my little hearts that I used. And these ones are great though, because after you've cut your Fino out, you can punch it back out they're the best but they're not cheap so i don't have lots of them and for my gingerbread men i used that i've got little sets in here look there's a tiny teddy bear that's a cake making one um, and just various different shapes here flowers and yeah, so there's all variety of kinds of cake cutters and things you can buy um, and then I had a, another set of cutters which I got from a craft shop. I don't know what they're called though. Just various shapes because I like the fact that they go from small to big. Handy to have lots of nice shaped cutters. So that's the cutters I use. Um, oh, this is a great one. Uh, oops, pasta maker. A pasta maker. So let me just... Take a bit of fine put it in here and shroom, wind it through and that way if you want to do something like with this little dolly i didn't do it on this and you can see how thick just dusty look how thick and chunky that skirt is but if you do it through the um pasta maker it comes out fine and thin and you can sort of bend it and it, it really gives that illusion of fabric so yeah um what else do i use a toothbrush is good for texture um, I use this also, you know, if you want something to look sort of textured, you can use various different things, toothbrushes, wire brushes, you know, wire brush is brilliant for making tips. Like if you're making a, I don't know, maybe a, um, some dollhouse food and you wanted to do an orange, you'd like that. So it looks pitted all over, um, like various, uh, sets of clay tools like this sort of thing which come in handy. Also, I found things like pins. Um, there you go, there's a little wire brush which I use for stippling. Um, a crochet hook. Um, I don't even, oh, that's the end of one of my, one of these tools. Look, oh, it's broken. I need to glue that back in. That's from that set. And there's a little brush, loads of toothpicks. Just a tiny little piece of metal, you know, you can use absolutely anything. Screws, toothpicks, nails, um, sometimes use lolly sticks. That's another one, I mostly use that for scooping up my own. It was good for making mouths, smiley mouths. Um, yeah, so that's some of the tools. Um, I can't think of anything else I want to show you. 
I should really go and check on our little friend in the oven and see how she's getting on. Oh yeah, and maybe show you some of the fimo. Oh, no, it's a bit too. Let's see if we can put it over this way. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so those are the pastels, and sometimes what I do is I'll scrape them off with like um, I don't know my scalpel blade or something like that, and I'll scrape a bit of each colour and mix them into a little pile of powder together so that you can make your own colours you know because these are a bit strong coloured so you, you can mix them up as well and use them um oh well, these are my little piece of fencing i'm going to make a fairy house and that's going to be the fence around the garden so and i think i might incorporate these little pixies into it in their bathtubs i'm not sure yet exactly but yeah you can get various brands that one's called studio and that's by Sculpey, but they, that's a big you know they do bigger blocks in that one so and then that's by Sculpey because it's you can um use your acrylic paint or whatever you want to color this one because it's neutral color so but that isn't what i use for the fairies i use the flesh tone so you can get all these different colors like i said i've got fimo and Sculpey. i've got a mixture a mixture of the both um, I find Sculpey's a lot softer, um, and I've got some of the non-branded ones. I can't find any of the Sculpey's. In here somewhere. Know, but yeah, yeah, that's uh, my collection of colours at the moment. So, alright, so I better go and rescue this little uh, elf from the oven. Um, so yeah, I can't think of anything else. But if you've got any questions, so anything that I haven't covered, um, yeah, go ahead and ask and I'll let you know. Um, yeah, I'll be right back with the other elf. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, the other elf is out the oven. Um, what I actually did was put a piece of tissue on top of the um, corn flour because I didn't want to have to brush her too much. Normally I take this bigger brush and I'll just brush brush the corn flour away but because she was repaired I really didn't want to put too much stress on it so as you can see she is repaired not too bad so let's just prop her up here for a second and then we'll get back to work on those um, and go on to the next stage there is something else I forgot to show you you can buy these um, Fimo powders silver I've got silver and gold this one has been transferred into another pot but as you can see you can see how fine that powder is. You just need the tiniest, teeniest. I had this one for about 10 years and it was a pot this size and I have used it loads and loads and loads of times. And I think they're, I don't know, I don't think they're quite the same as mica powders, but um, I don't know if I can show you. There's a little piece of FIMO. There's a little piece here, like, this stuff, look at that, the coverage, that's literally just a dot. You can barely see it on the end of the brush. And that will cover, look at that, amazing. So, yeah, if you want to do anything and want to make it look like treasure, I would suggest the uh, FIMO glitters. They've got, I think they've got other colours now. When I first bought these, you only could get silver and gold. But I think this... These more modern ones, you can get different colours, maybe red and a few others. But yeah, like I said, I've had that for well, more than 10 years, but I don't even like to think, to be fair. Um, yeah, and it's really lasted, but you can see how fine that powder is when you see it through the glass. It just looks solid. But yeah, they're amazing, absolutely amazing, those are. And uh, other than that, I use um, these ones, which are um, mica powders. So you get some lovely, this one's a lovely pearl. I mean, they work really well with FIMO. They work really well with um, some blue and purple. And they also work really, really well with, um, gosh, my brain's not working. The resin, this, the resin that I put in here. So they work fantastic with that. But I didn't buy them in tubs because you can buy these in little bags for just so much of a fraction of the price as the ones in the tubs. I started buying them in the tubs, as you can see, but um, yeah, to have a tub of each, I guess it starts to get expensive. So I just bought these in a set, which I recommend because they're fantastic and they really are long lasting. It's not like you use them up very quickly. 
And then just quickly is another thing I use quite a lot of is glitter. But I always use the, um, I've got quite a big container of it. I can't really show you, but I'm trying to my board in a set with, you know, these little, like this in a set. And I've got about every colour under the sun, so, but still, yeah, I really do like these ones. The mica powder is better. They're much more um, rich in colour, but the, the glitters, if they do have their purpose, I use them. And they're makeup grade glitters, so from the art shop, again, um, I think that really is it this time. Everything I've got to show you before we crack on. So, yeah, that's all the equipment I use. Um, and now, yeah, I've got to just, I've got to glue them in here, in their bathtubs. Um... I think I chose these two, didn't I? Maybe that one and that one. So I have to glue them in. I've already put a little layer, just so they don't sink straight to the bottom and they sit that little bit higher, because I want her hand to be in the water. She's going to be splashing. So I've already pre-filled them with a little bit that's now hard. I've done quite a few of them. I've got actually a, a whole box full of them so to play with. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is glue them into the little bathtub, stick them in place, and then any little finishing touches I want to put on them, I shall do. And then I'm going to go and mix some resin. And once they're glued in place, I'll pour some resin in. And then I'll add anything that I want to be sitting in the bottom of the bathtub under the water. And I'll allow it to dry, and then I'll add another layer of resin. And then I'll show you how to make the splashes. So I'm going to have a hand splashing in the water with the water splashing out. So there's a little trick, technique you can do to make that happen. So that's the next stage. So I'll just take you for a little closer look at the, um, at the elves. So you can see in a bit more detail. And then we'll get started on the rest of the works. Their little ears look. Little pointy ears. Yeah, as I say, this, especially the lower part of the body, you don't have to be too careful because it's going to be sunk under the water, sort of up to about here, and her hand's going to be in the water. That's why they're in different positions. They're going to be splashing around and uh, essentially playing. And this is the one we just repaired. So you can see the line, but that's not too bad. It could be the crease in her, in her elbow. And their little elf ears. So that's, yeah going to be glued in so she's going to be sitting in the in the bathtub splashing around and playing and I'm going to have splashes coming off her feet and maybe she'll be holding a washcloth and maybe put a bar of soap in the bottom and then when I do the next layer over it'll look like there's a bar of soap dropped to the bottom of the bathtub and this one's going to be in this one here like that actually I think it's going to have to be the other way yeah that that way She's going to sit like that and be splashing in the water. So, yeah, I'll uh, meet you back in a minute. Yeah, that was completely daft of me to say that I would be back to finish in a minute because um, obviously I've got to wait for them to dry. So I've glued them. Um, use some Gorilla Glue. Um, here's a quick last look at the equipment. Um, yeah, I've stuck them in the glue and... They're in their little bathtubs, all stuck down. But uh, it does take a few hours for this um, Gorilla Glue to set. So um, I certainly don't want to sit and watch paint dry. I mean, glue dry. And I'm sure you guys don't either. So I'm going to go away, leave that to dry for a couple of hours. And I'm pretty hungry, so I'm going to go and make some dinner. And I'm guessing I won't be getting these finished tonight. So I'll get back to you with another video on finishing them off. Um, thanks for watching everybody. Um, this video is especially for my friend Marika all the way in Canada. So I hope you get inspired and enjoy your new Sculpey um, and have lots of fun. So lots of love from me to you over there in Canada and to your lovely little dog. Thanks for the pictures. Um, yeah. And thanks for watching guys thanks everybody um hope you enjoyed the video hope it was uh, informative at least and uh i'll see you guys with an update on what i'll do with these um these little 
pixies in their bathtubs uh, next. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll update you as soon as I've I've done something with them. Lovely. Thanks again. Bye. See you all soon.